I'm Jason Miller, a full-time professional flight instructor. On the Finer Points channel, you can join me as I bring you tips and tricks that I've learned from 20 years on the flight line. Welcome back to the Finer Points. In this video, we're talking about the flight hazard of wake turbulence, how to visualize it, how to avoid it, and how to make sure you never end up like this Cessna 120 that I'm about to show you, uh, where they encounter the wake of a helicopter shortly uh, after the helicopter lands, lose control of the aircraft, and crash next to the runway. Now, the pilot of this aircraft, uh, this was not a fatal accident, so the pilot survived this, but let's watch uh, what happened to that aircraft. So looking at that again, you can see the Cessna comes in here uh, very shortly after the helicopter lands. Uh, the wake of the helicopter causes the aircraft to roll to the right. Presumably the pilot puts in left roll inputs, uh, but it's just not enough to counteract the force of the wake turbulence and the aircraft contacts the ground. So obviously one of the keys to avoiding this type of accident is being able to visualize the wake of an aircraft, right? And to visualize how that wake is going to dissipate and where it's going to travel. So let's talk for just a minute about how wakes work on helicopters and airplanes. Okay, so it's important to remember that any wing producing lift is going to produce a wake. And it doesn't matter if it's a helicopter or an airplane. And the good news is you can kind of visualize it the same way. Um, a helicopter will give off two little wake, wake vortices here, one on either side of the rotor, and a fixed wing aircraft will give off a vortice on either wing. So both aircraft are giving off wingtip vortices or vortices on either side of the aircraft. And these vortices start as super localized, tight little tornadoes as the lift tries to equalize, right? And the high pressure tries to find a low pressure. Over time, about two minutes or so, these wakes will dissipate in speed and intensity and they will sort of broaden out like that and become kind of big swirling vortices like that, right? And eventually they will simply dissipate altogether. For most of us that have had a wake turbulence encounter, we're encountering some version of that bigger wake, right? And maybe we get a little lift or we feel a little bobble in the airplane. Where it gets really severe, however, is if that tight little tornado somehow hits your aircraft exactly right on the aileron, for example, and initiates a roll. Uh, those are the cases that become severe. And the trick is, you can't really tell exactly where and when that's happening, right? When the wake is exactly dissipating, it's a matter of visualization. Now this can get even experienced pilots. I mean, look back to an accident in Reno in 2016 where you had a flight school owner, a pilot uh, in his early 70s, been flying out there for decades, right? But on this particular day, he was landing parallel to a 757. He was downwind of that aircraft. The wake caught hit the, the aileron or something on his bonanza that caused it to roll. And I want you to know that there are accidents on record where very large aircraft are affected by this. There's one I can think of where a 727 was rolled upside down when landing behind a 757. So um, I think it's really important that you have very conservative avoidance procedures because you really can never tell when that little wake is going to hit you in just the wrong spot. Okay, so in summary, if it's all about avoidance, let's discuss that. When it comes to fixed wing aircraft, whenever possible, you are going to try to land after the point where they touch down. Sometimes you can see the smoke that the wheels make and use that as a visual identification point. Other times you just have to pick a mark on the runway and kind of remember it. Um, if you're taking off behind an aircraft, they tell you to outclimb it, right? Stay above its climb path. Well, often that's not possible. So if it's not possible, see if there's a way that you can offset upwind. Those wakes in front of you will be drifting downwind. If you can quickly offset upwind, you can perhaps avoid them. Or if that's not possible, simply wait for two minutes before that, I mean, after that aircraft departs, before you choose to depart, even if ATC clears you for takeoff. Your PIC, this is gonna be your call. And that's really what I have to say about helicopters as well. 
you're really going to have like this pilot if you want to avoid being this pilot it's about giving a certain amount of time after that helicopter goes by before you choose to go in and land even if you've been cleared for landing because often that comes with a use caution for wake turbulence okay well your caution tool is going to be i'm not going to do it <laughs> until two minutes passes and the last thing i'll say about avoidance is be aware of the crosswind right these things are not just drifting straight down and out although they are doing that they are also drifting with the air mass so remember like the guy in reno if you are downwind of an aircraft that's landing next to you the wake could be a critical issue. All right, aviators, that's all for this episode of The Finer Points. A huge thanks to the sponsors. Remember that ForeFlight is the essential app for aviation and that when you renew your AOPA membership, you should select Pilot Protection Services. A huge thanks to the patrons. There's tons of bonus content there and monthly hangouts with me. If you would like to support this channel in our mission to get quality flight training out on the internet and get bonus content, please come to patreon.com slash learn TFP. There is a free three-day trial of our ground school app if you'd like to see some of the stuff that I would teach you in the airplane, whether you're an experienced pilot or a new pilot, I know that there is stuff you will get out of that. And also watch for our new monthly lecture series. There's one coming up this Wednesday. I uh, just kind of go live on YouTube here where I can take your comments and we can go a little bit deeper on some of these topics you're seeing in the Finer Points videos. Okay, I'm Jason Miller. You guys are the best fans on the internet. Until next time, be safe and fly your best.